Supplier relationship management, it's one of the areas of supply chain that tends to get overlooked. We all look at the customer end, but we tend to forget about the supplier end. So that's what we're talking about this week, coming right up. So the topic this week is supplier relationship management. And with us this week, we have an expert on that topic. Trent Morris, welcome, Trent. Good to see you back. Hey Rob, good to be back. So I think last time you were here, we were talking about procurement. So this is a bit of a similar topic. Um, tell us a little bit about supplier relationship management. What's it all about? Why is it so important? How do we do it? Yeah, thanks, Rob. So supplier relationship management is uh, fundamentally important to a business in the same way that, that key account management is as well. And uh, finally, we were talking about procurement and, uh, you know, it's typically supplier relationship management is a subset of procurement because once you've actually got a supplier in place, you want to make sure that you are managing that relationship well. Uh, typically, and, and we've discussed this in the past, you know, typically if you don't manage a relationship at all, very soon after the honeymoon period is finished, the, uh, the relationship dies very quickly. If you only ever you know, manage a supplier in accordance with the operational requirements, then you get exactly that. You get the exactly what you've agreed to, which is the, you know, managing a relationship to the KPIs. But supplier relationship management actually tries to take it one step further and get the best out of the relationship and make sure that both parties have increasing value from the relationship. And so you actually get a nice J curve uh, coming out of the relationship whereby, you know, the, the value that is generated is far exceeds the, the money that's being spent into it, uh, which is a great position to be in as a, as a, as a customer, knowing that your suppliers uh, are investing into your supply chain uh, beyond just what the operational requirements are. So, so what are some of the things that, that people kind of get wrong <coughs> with SRM? Are, are they measuring the wrong things? Are they not communicating frequently enough? Uh, probably a little bit of both, to be perfectly honest. You know, so when you think about, you know, KPIs, uh, most people think about, you know, a, a 98 or a 99%. And, and we'll have to do a, a video on performance management because I think it's a really important topic that's not well understood. But, you know, we, we have this idea that as long as they're hitting their KPIs, that's what we really require from them. And yet, if you think about it, your suppliers are the absolute experts in their area of supply or service in the case of a service provider. And so what supplier relationship management does, if it's done effectively, is leverages that knowledge and that expertise to actually create a greater return than you're, what, you're, what you're actually receiving. And so it's a little bit of, of measuring, me measuring me metrics, but at the same time, it's also uh, building the relationship from a communications perspective. So if you think about any good relationship, whether it be a, a marriage or whether it be a, with family, it always works best if there's clear communication. And so supplier relationship management framework actually develops a really strong uh, rhythm of meetings and communications such that these ideas can be bounced around and they can be managed appropriately. Uh, and that relationship needs to extend from not only the strategic level, but also at the tactical level and the operational level as well. So that all of the right people are discussing things at the right level whether they be challenges that are being faced and, and being resolved at the lowest possible level, or whether it's a redesign of the entire supply chain that's done at a top to top level. So that framework sounds like it could be an interesting follow up video. Well done for mentioning <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, that. That framework, we, we call the operating rhythm. Uh, I don't think it's a new term. I know that a lot of people use it. I know that, uh, that we, you know, we encounter the term all the time. But really, yes, it's exactly right. The operating rhythm is one that is is absolutely necessi uh, a necessity into actually making sure that the supply chain is operating effectively because it takes into consideration all the different elements to make a, a supply chain successful, whether it be, you know, ensuring that the day-to-day -day operations are happening well, you know, at the supervisory level, there's, there's a review of the week that's just gone, there's a, a forecast on the week that's coming, at the, at the uh, operation correction at the tactical level, you know, you have people who are looking at KPIs and costs and safety and environment. And at the top to top level, you know, you're looking at your continuous improvement and, and network design and, and all of those big picture type things as well. 
Okay, excellent. So for those watching, and, and there's probably a bunch of people watching who've moved into a new organization, and they're watching this and thinking, I wonder if we're good at supplier relationship management. What's one tip that you could give them? Go and look at this now. What would it be to highlight whether there's an issue or not? I think the, the number one thing that will highlight whether there's an issue is whether or not it's actually in your calendar. You know, if we all operate to a calendar, well, most people operate to a calendar, but have you actually got your monthly operating meetings in your calendar for the whole year? Have you got your strategic quarterly business review type meetings in your calendar? You know, if it's not there, then you haven't prioritised it. And that's the absolute number one most simple trick you can do is put it in your calendar, make it a priority and ensure both parties are coming prepared. So, so that, that raises a really dumb question in my mind. I'm very good at dumb questions. Who does this? Who does the SRM? So it's, you know, it's typically managed, as I said, by procurement. It doesn't have to be, but that's typically where it sits because it is part of the contractual piece of the business. And most businesses these days, are, or a lot of businesses these days, are starting to actually put it in the contract, typically in a, in a schedule of relationship management. Um, but it can be managed by either operations or procurement. Uh, typically up to the monthly operating uh, meeting level, it's managed by operations to ensure, as I said, KPIs are being hit, costs are being managed, safety isn't an issue, environment is an issue, et cetera, because they're all operational concerns. Above that, where you're starting to think more strategically, you're starting to get a whole of business in, in approach, normally procurement would look at it at the, uh, the strategic level from a, uh, a, procurement, a procurement perspective and, and a strategic perspective. That being said, you do have to have operational people in that meeting, otherwise things aren't going to get actioned appropriately. So balance of operational and procurement, depending on what level you're talking about in the relationship. Okay, that's a pretty good summary there, Trent. Thank you very much for joining us again. And uh, if you're watching this, if you found that of interest, do comment down below. Particularly, let us know in the comments below, do you actually have a formal supplier relationship management process within your organisation? Yes or no, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.